We are busy looking at the book of 1 John. And we know that this John writing this book um, also wrote the Gospel of John as well as the book of Revelation. And we've learned that um, he's actually not writing a letter in the way that we see other letters in the Bible. He's writing a poetic sermon. That is the style that he's writing in. Um, and it's good to understand that so that we can understand why he's using certain terms and certain languages. And he's kind of weaving his way creatively through certain themes, circling back to them again and again. Um, and with that in mind, um, we can better understand what John is trying to say to us, what he's trying to teach. Um, and we also know that he's writing to his church a people that got distracted. Um, they were busy with a lot of different ideas and got distracted and confused with what the actual message of Jesus is, um, that their faith was built on. He speaks about false prophets proclaiming different things from what they were teaching, from what the apostles were teaching. And he's writing this book to people that um, to help them discern how to, um, to help them discern truth from lies, because a lot of different messages was going around in that time. And that's true for us today as well. A lot of different messages um, goes around and we get distracted or confused with what the core essence of Christianity is actually about. So let's dive right in. Um, 1 John 4 verse 1 to 3, he writes, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets has gone out into the world. By this, you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ has come, to, um, uh, um, has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. And here he gives us a first principle by which we can discern truth from lies um, and false prophets from actual accurate teachings about Jesus. He says, if any message um, is from God, it will confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh from God. So he is fully God and fully man. Um, this is such an important part of our faith, uh, such a um, fundamental part of Christianity, to believe that Jesus was fully God. He's mighty to save. Um, he has all power and authority, but he was also completely human, limited um, to the space and time and physical elements that we are. Um, and that is an important message because a lot of people in that time and even today will like the part that Jesus was human and he was relatable and he taught us good things. And they like that part of Christianity, um, that Jesus teaches us good things and we should do those good things. But he's not really God. He's not really our savior. He's not really our Lord, the Lord of our lives. He's, all, he's just a good teacher. And on the other hand, a lot of people like the idea that Jesus was God and denied his humanity in a sense. Um, and we do that today as well. We see how people see Christianity as this level of spirituality that you have to achieve, that you have to reach some sort of um, deep and intense spiritual place to become part of God's kingdom. And we know this is not true. Jesus came to teach us that it's accessible for everybody and that anyone that confesses and that believes in Jesus can be called a child of God. And these were kind of the two distractions in that time that we see today as well. And John is making a very, very strong statement in saying that messages that doesn't include Jesus as God and Jesus as fully um, flesh, fully human as well, his messages of the Antichrist. And that just means that if you are not for the complete and full picture of who Jesus is, then you are by definition against Jesus. You are part of, um, you are anti-Christ. Um, and that is what he meant by prophet, false prophets and being, and um, he explained the spirit of the Antichrist. Messages that teaches things that are against 
um, what Jesus came to say about himself. And the next thing that we see in 1 John 4, um, that he he tries to help us understand how we can discern false um, false messages from true messages, um, is the concept of God's love. Um, listen to 1 John 4, verse 17 to 18. Um, John explains it beautifully that love is the main almost filter that we can put all information through to see if it really is from God. By this um, is love perfected with us so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment because as he is, um, also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears um, has not been perfected in love. God's voice will always communicate love. This is what this that is what this verse is about. Um, our um, God's per- perfect word is um, evident in the way that He came to love us, and the way that His love um, casts out all fear of punishment. That means that any message that asks of us to achieve something, to jump through some sort of religious hoop, um, to make stuff happen on our own, to achieve God's love, is not from God. Um, that is a false message because the love of God casts out all fear, and specifically fear of punishment, um, the fear of being rejected by God, because His love is all-inclusive, unconditional, and took the initiative. And then lastly, John says that this love of God is supposed to be evident in our lives. Um, if we show by our words and by our actions the true self-sacrificial love of God, then people will know that we belong to Him. Um, And that is a lost, um, almost filter or um, way that we can see if something um, anybody says about Jesus is true or not and is really from God or not. Um, Their words and their actions will show love. The truth about who Jesus is will always be found in the way his people loves. Um, and we can ask these questions in, in when we are busy um, talking to people, studying messages, studying scripture, listening to opinions. We can ask, is this loving? Is this helpful? Is it building up? Is it beneficial? Is it in line with God's word? Does it fit his full character? Everything Jesus came to say about himself. Um, Not just the parts that we like or that we um, appreciate or that's easy for us. Everything who Jesus is, the God part, the man part, the self-sacrificial love part, everything. um, If we get to know Jesus for who he is, it will be easy to discern um, what is also from him. Um, And that is what 1 John wants to get across when he writes chapter 4. So for us, it is important to not just listen to all the different voices in the world, but to make sure that we make God's voice that's in Scripture the main authority of our lives. If you enjoyed this message, please subscribe to our channel to receive more content like this.